All right. Uh, hello. Uh, we are Group 7, and we have the mental health programs in prison. Uh, my name is Sheldon. And my name is Wendy. And I'm Lance. All right. Um, share the screen. Okay. So for the first part of the mental health program, we'll be looking at the description and the admission criteria. This program is going to offer rehabilitating services and medical and psychological treatment. And also the inmates will have the opportunity to be placed in a different wing in the prison apart from the general population. Uh, when the inmates first enter the prison, they will initially be screened to see if they have any mental health problems. And if they do, that's what, that's, that is what will determine if they are separated into the separate wing or not. This program has five core values, like all programs. It um, takes pride in these goals that it hopes to accomplish. So the first goal of this program and the priority is to provide mental health treatment for every inmate who needs, who needs it. <clears throat> um, according to the National Health Pro Problem, Problems of Prison and Jail Inmates, um, it was an article by James and Glaze, only one in three inmates receives men mental health treatment while they are incarcerated. So we really wanna make sure that these prisoners who have these mental health problems have the opportunity to have this treatment. Um, our second goal is to rehabilitate the offender by the release date. Uh, the third goal that we have is to strengthen the inmates' ties with others in the facility, family members, and the community. This is one of our important goals. Well, they're all important, but this one we, we work uh, towards because we want to reduce recidivism rates. Our fourth goal is to make sure that the offender, the offender has mental health treatment once released, if not fully rehabilitated. So. If they are not fully rehabilitated, we want to make sure that they have an outside facility to go to keep continuing that mental health treatment. And our fifth goal is to make good use of our resources and funds since it is costly to have mental health help in prisons. So for our admission criteria, like I said, all prisoners will be screened when they first come into the prison and that will determine if they have mental health problems or not. Um, they will be diagnosed by a mental health professional and they do still have to apply to the program and their file will be reviewed once they are admitted into the program. Uh, we, are, we are accepting any kind of offenders from felons and any just small misdemeanors, long or short sentences. Uh, short sentences we will put a great emphasis on because we want, since the offenders will be released quicker and sooner, we want them to be rehabilitated. So if it comes down to the space, we're only going to be taking 100 inmates in at a time. So that's when that would kind of fit in on who we choose to enter the program. Uh, to be eligible for the program, the program is a voluntary program. The offender must comply with all the rules. They must have good behavior and, of course, have that desire to be rehabilitated and cooperate with all staff members and undergo all kinds of the testing and the sessions that the professionals want them to go and must attend all of the counseling. Continuing for the rules of admission and the eligibility, um, of course, they have to be approved, and like I said, they, have, they must maintain their good behavior, and no violent acts must be committed while they are in the program that will result in an automatic disqualification. So the reasons for being disqualified are if the inmate commits any violent act, if they are found with any contraband or any unauthorized substance in their system, that will just automatically remove them from the program. Uh, for disciplinary infractions, depending on the severity infraction, they will be able to m remain in the program, but um, they will be closely monitored and they will be placed like on probation and communication will be kept with the staff over the inmate. Now it's time for the time frame of, for program design and the implementation. Implement, implementation. Um, the time of completion should be about four months. Um, that takes up the process of hiring, inmate screening, 
training of the employees and acquiring the right equipment for the perfect treatment. The staff would be one psychiatrist, two psychologists, four social workers, and four correctional officers. The training for these employer, employees would be that these top three health officials, one, the psychiatrists and psychologists, they would attend health seminars. With those health seminars, they would gain all the extra information that they already have from the, edu from the medical field background that they have. With that information that they have, they will train the lower level um, employees, maybe the social workers and the correctional officers involved. Um, on the training, they would be informed, uh, inform the lower level people, and they are very trained on the awareness of emotional background of breakdowns as well as the suicidal signs, since that is one of the top effects of and top downsides of the mental capacity of a inmate. Um, they are trained to have suicidal prevention and emotional encouragement throughout the facility and to have passion and sympathy for each inmate as they target rehabilitation. The psychiatrists and psychologists train a lower level staff as well as they do the screening, diagnosis, and treatments of each individual. Social workers assist the inmates and help, help them cope with their issues. Also, as they go through their treatments, inmate support and encouragement is, is required by the social workers since they are having individual one-on-one -on -one time with each inmate every, every day. The correctional officers have a simple task, is protecting the medical staff and the upper level um, employment uh, using they are more encouraged of using their voice rather than using force because using force can prevent any re rehabilitation from taking place they are also required to use encouragement because any mental health um, inmate can really use encouragement rather than being down talked or just being um, declassified from an inmate uh, the completion it ranges from a few weeks until the inmate or medical mental patient is physically or mentally ready to exit and get in their prison population. We are targeting uh, rehabilitation. That is our main focus, as well as the to end that off. We would have final screening and test of healthcare officials. Our main goal in the in these uh, training staff, train the staff, and all throughout the. Uh, employment would be to protect, promote, and endorse the human rights of the prisoners, uh, take care of the needs, and give the needs when there is a reasonable time to provide the medical attention when they're needed, as said from Suresh Bottomath. Okay, uh, next, uh, the next part will be the program content. Um, and for this, there's going to be uh, two steps, uh, first being initial screening of the inmates, and then uh, the Beyond the Bridge program. Um, the first step uh, will be the screening, which will be done by the psychologist and psychiatrist to properly diagnose um, all of the inmates, um, you know, to go through their medical history and their background, um, to figure out their mental health issues and properly diagnose them so that they can get the proper treatment they need. Um, after this screening is done, uh, the inmates will be placed into separate wings, um, separate from the general population, um, that way that can uh, eliminate, you know, problems with the regular inmates uh, and less, uh, you know, violations and such. Um, the next will be the, the actual program of Beyond the Bridge, which is going to be a six-week program, which um, there should be a range from eight to nine of them uh, throughout a calendar year. Um, and uh, there will be 100 inmates that are going to be allowed into the program at a time. Um, and this program originated at, in a New York City jail. Um, and the goal of this whole program, which state, was stated by um, Gloa Kolish and um, the other researchers, is um, to bring mental health services into the units where the patients and the inmates reside. Um, so from this, this there's going to be the social workers, the psychologists and psychiatrists, which are going to be the trained professionals that are going to be having these one-on-one -on -one encounters with uh, the inmates. Um, they're going to have a centralized office in the housing wing of the inmates, which will allow for uh, everyday availability and, you know, always having that contact with the inmates, with the social workers and psychologists and such. 
Um, another main key of this program is to have group therapy, to have all the inmates work together um, and see their progress and you know benefit from one another. And then another key uh, concept is going to be the motivational therapy in which you know all the social workers, psychologists, and uh, psychiatrists are always going to be um, you know, encouraging the inmates to do better and never down, down talking any of them or, you know, saying negative things as well as the correctional officers. And they're going to be there to, you know, you know, support them and through their hard times. Um, next part of this program is going to be the incentives, which is going to be uh, that the inmates will receive from their progress and participation, which will be separated from, you know, commissary dollars, which will be about $1,500 per session. Um, and then the paid roles, um, which there'll be three leadership roles for uh, inmates to take for each session. Um, and, you know, just focus, the whole goal is to focus on the constant help and treatment of the inmates so that they, you know, progress and uh, to lower the recidivism rates. Um, next, we have the budget, um, which is going to be separated into three parts, the yearly cost, fixed one-time cost, and the emergency funds. Um, for the yearly cost, this is going to include uh, the salaries of the paid workers. Um, it's going to include the program content, which we're going to be using uh, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Um, that's going to be kind of our main source um, of implementing our program. Um, then we're going to also have the incentives, which I, like I said before, is going to be like the commissary dollars per sessions. And then um, there's going to be the three paid roles, which will be like $3 an hour. Um, and then on top of that, there's going to be the supplies and materials, which is going to range from like the pins and papers and stuff and stuff like that for the treatments. The next, we're going to have the fixed one-time cost. Um, this is going to include the office equipment uh, for the paid uh, professionals, employees, and then also going to include electronics like the uh, computers for the uh, you know uh, social workers and psychologists to keep track of all of their you know data and all their info with the spe specific inmates. And then last, we have the emergency funds, which are going to be the money that's left over um, after the other two. And this is going to be used for any repairs needed for the computers, um, you know, repairs on the printers that we are going to be purchasing. And um, it's also going to be used for any extra material that we need that we may run out of, like pens and paper. Okay. So lastly, we have the empirical support and effectiveness section of the mental health program. <clears throat> Mental health programs, there is a lot of research showing that they can be costly, especially for prisons. And mental health treatment costs the U.S. billions of dollars every year, but that is not including what uh, is spent in prison. So you can only imagine what the amount would be if you added in that cost from the prison mental health treatment. The reason mental health programs are not um, really something talked about or in, implemented in a lot of prisons is because they lack community support, funding, and resources. And most of the time the decisions are made by the correctional facility management. And there is also evidence to show that mental health treatment is usually only for those patients who have emergency needs. Uh, do we do have a success story, a program implemented by the Bureau of Correctional Health Services in New York called Beyond the Bridge in 2010, aimed at improving mental health treatment in, in a New York City jail. It did help lower the prevalence of mental health sy symptoms and, of course, also helped decrease the amount of time spent on suicide watch units in that jail. So... Uh, we would also like to advocate for more research on mental health programs just because there isn't enough mental health programs. Like I said earlier, only one in three inmates are receiving mental health treatment. And those are, there are many, over half of inmates um, need, are in need of mental health treatment. So we would like for there to be more mental health program research and more funding or at least try to find cost-effective ways to implement mental health programs in prison so that inmates will have that ready, readily available to them. Um, we're also in need of more support from the correctional facility itself and from the community and also from the state. And that is our mental health program. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>